And welcome to worship with New Life Metropolitan Community Church. We're just regular folks who believe that God's love is for all people. So no matter who you are or how you self-identify or what's going on in your life, know that you're welcome here. Make yourself at home as we do our gathering call today. Arnold will come and lead us in Spanish if you'll respond in the bold. Mercy, peace, and love be yours in abundance. We know that in all things God works together with those who love God to bring about what is good. Sabemos que en todas las cosas Dios coopera con los que ama a Dios para realizar el bien. Relax. Everything's going to be all right. Everything's coming together. Open your hearts. Love is on the way. For what we are suffering now cannot compare with the glory that will be shown to us. Porque lo que estamos sufriendo ahora no puede compararse con la gloria que se nos mostrará. For by the grace given to us, let us not think of ourselves more highly than we thought to think. No pensemos de nosotros mismos más alto de lo que deberíamos pensar. But to think with sober judgment, each of us according to the measure of faith that God has given to us. May mercy, peace, and love be ours in abundance. Que la misericordia, paz, y amor sean nuestros en abundancia. May God bless this reading and the hearing of the Holy Scriptures as we sing together. I got a feeling. 
Gracious and merciful God, thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the gift of life and of love. And we gather in this space and place. May your spirit find each of us, no matter what kind of week we've had. We lift you up. We praise you. We praise you for all that you are and all that you make it possible, not only for us to discover, but to be and to share with each other. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Before you're seated, turn around and say, some, say good morning to somebody maybe that you haven't seen before. If you're joining us online, we're delighted to have you for worship. Type in a comment so we know that you're here as well. Thank you. You may be seated. It's good to have all of you here today, especially perhaps if you're visiting with us or joining us for worship, either on site or online for the first time. We're just regular folks who believe that God's love is for all people. So please know that you're welcome in anything we do. And all of us look forward to getting a chance to speak to you after the service or during the service. If you're typing online or if you're bored and you punch somebody during the sermon or something, uh, we, we'll deal with that as it comes. Jennifer, you're back. Thank you. Thank you, all you beautiful people. And um, Mark, I like to be extraordinary today okay. on Sunday. Okay. I don't want to be a normal. I just want to be extraordinary. Audacious. <laughs> Audacious. Okay. Welcome to everybody, you online, out there. Here are some announcements for you. First, lunch today, because you know we like to eat. And if you're not here right now, you still have time to get to our lunch destination which is Fuddruckers today. We're going to Fuddruckers. So if you like the meat, they got a lot of meats. <laughs> they have salads too. They got the eats. They have salad, they have buffalo, they have ostrich, they have all kinds of good stuff. Possum? <laughs> no. All right. So to, uh, starting this week on the 11th, that's Tuesday, we do have our grief support meeting here in the building. And that is open to everyone. If you have questions, please email griefandloss at newlifemcc.net. You may contact Calvin or Jeannie for more information. The group is open to everybody. We do have also this week on Tuesday at 7 p.m. via Google Meet is our board of directors meeting. The link is available on request. Coming up on Wednesday, we have Wednesday nights on the beach. That's when we meet at the beach, okay, 700 East Ocean View Avenue. You bring your beach chair, you bring your little beverage. I like to bring some water. Um, <laughs> It's a bug spray. You might need some bug spray. Um, and we, we sit around and we fellowship and we just enjoy each other's company. And it is a great time. If it rains, we go out to eat. <laughs> we do have coming up on Saturday this carnival pool party. Now, this is a fundraiser, so there are going to be some tickets. All right, Jeannie. Okay, thank you. Um, Mark threw me off last week because he said I had two sentences. And my wife got mad because I said it was cheesy. It's not cheesy because we've been working hard and it's really turning out well. Um, it is a fundraiser. And we have food that you can purchase with tickets. We have lots of games. And there's, there's some things that you can do that don't cost anything, like you can swim for free, bring a towel. If you forget one, we have some. We're going to have the big life-size Jenga out. We'll put out the cornhole bowl boards. And it's going to be a great time. We're going to do a backwards rain dance that morning, so it's going to be good. Everything's going to be good. So everybody come. If you have an RSVP, that's fine. We're going to make sure we have food for everybody. Hot dogs, hamburgers, cotton candy, snow cones, lots of lots of more candy. And drinks. Hold on, Jeannie. 
Oh, oh so. and a jail and a splash tank. Hey. This is at Jeannie and Elisa's home. I don't know if the address, is the address on there? The address is on the, oh. I think you said that about okay. the flyer. It's at our home. The dress is on the flyer, but there's a misprint on the flyer. It's not 15 tickets for $20 because the tickets are a dollar each. It's 20 tickets for $15. It's a bargain deal. And you can, you can eat and do all that stuff and yeah. even throw water on me? You, if, you got, if you have 20 tickets, you can eat, then get some extra candy or cotton candy. You can play all the games and splash him or put somebody in jail, and this is the sheriff. I am royally, you know what? Yeah. And I'm already depressed today, and I'm going to have, since today's sermon title is Sunday, Pity Party Sunday, I'm going to have my own little pity party because I did try on my half wetsuit, you know, thing that from 20 years ago. It doesn't quite fit. And Betty says she's bringing ice. Now, when you throw ice on something hot, Thank you, Jeannie and Elise, for hosting us for that. Thank you. I do believe teasing those people who are at the dunk tank or splash zone and teasing the people who are in jail, that's going to be free, too. <laughs> <clears throat> and I'm going to have handcuffs. <laughs> I know, he told me I got to go fast because his long sermon is like 20 pages long. Okay, we do. <laughs> Next weekend on the 26th, that's uh, the 22nd, sorry. That is a Saturday. That is our meal to go prep day at Sandra and Morocco's River House. The menu is pork barbecue, baked beans, roll, and cookies. So if you want to help out, you can fix some meals. You could deliver some meals, you could prep some meals, or you can help out monetarily. If you have any questions, contact Morocco and Matt. And then coming up in August, I think there's something happening August 5th. Drag, Drag bingo. Drag bingo. <laughs> Tickets are available already online. Uh, if you need to purchase something not online, you want to do it on site, please put your money in an envelope, mark it, bingo tickets with your name and the number of tickets that you're purchasing. We are receiving and accepting and encouraging folks that want to donate prizes or money to buy prizes. Remember, prizes need to be new. When people come, they're not expecting a yard sale gift. So we want to make sure they're new items that we're giving. So that's coming up August the 5th. All right. And I understand we may have some new talent that's going to debut. Uh, I, won't, I won't call any names. I know Oliver Muff yes. will not be there. Okay. Sorry. All right. No, he's getting his um, motorcycle courses taken that day. All right. Um, one last thing. We're in the summer. We're starting to gear up for back to school. And as a community, we do like to provide uniforms for some of the students who cannot purchase them on their own. Um, a lot of our schools in Norfolk are uniform schools. And right now, we are looking for the dark bl navy blue, the dark navy blue uniform shirts for um, polo, shirts. polo shirts for boys and girls in all sizes because we do pre-K on up to high school. Not high school. Junior high. Middle school. Is junior high a thing anymore? <laughs> Middle school. Elementary. Okay. okay. So... We're doing all sizes, but the students only go up to elementary school. And we will send out an email with this information in it again. So, and we'll be doing that throughout the month of August, right, James? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And right, right now, that's the dark blue, dark navy blue polo uniform shirts. You can see James for more information, but that's what we're looking at right now. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. <laughs> yeah. Let us sing together.
Words of Scripture from Job chapter 10, verse 2. I loathe my very life. Therefore, I will give free rein to my complaint and speak out in the bitterness of my soul. I say to God, do not declare me guilty, but tell me what charges you have against me. Matthew chapter 11, verses 16 through 19 and 28 through 30. To what can I compare this generation? They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling out to others, We played the pipe for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by her deeds. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. different versions of that song and variations that are out there. My favorite in being an old trumpet player, an old trumpet player myself, I guess, <laughs> Louis Armstrong. Emphasis you can just hear that gravelly voice of him saying, nobody knows. We've all said that from time to time, that nobody else knows. And truth of the matter is, sometimes we say to each other, oh, I know how you feel. Mm. Truth of the matter is, we really don't, do we? Because until we're in that same situation with that person, or maybe we don't know the person as well as we think we do. Mm -hmm. And so it's important for us to realize that. It's important for us to know that it's okay that when we're there and thinking, oh, and we'll talk more about this when we get to the sermon. Maybe this is sermon lead-up preface to that. This is the teaser for the sermon. It's pity party time. How many of us have had a pity party this morning already since we've been up? When I looked in the mirror, I sure had one today. Some of the rest of you needed to, maybe. I don't know. In any case... Prayer is important. Prayer is relationship with God and with each other. And it gets us through those tough times when we feel like nobody knows. One of the variations of the song is nobody knows but Jesus. Yeah. And as we're in relationship with God, knowing indeed that as we pray, and sometimes maybe we don't know how to pray or maybe we just find we can't in that moment. I like that passage from Scripture. I think it's in Paul's letter to the church at Rome that says, in those moments... When we can't or don't know how, God's Spirit somehow finds us, surrounds us, touches our spirit in a way that God already knows and God is already at work because we believe that God is not only behind us, beside of us, but where? Ahead of us in this journey. 
Tony, would you come and give voice to our prayer today? Lots of things that are going on in our, our country and across the world. I understand also that, unfortunately, that the current administration here in the Commonwealth of Virginia took out the resources in the Virginia Health uh, website for LGBT teens and youth, which is tragic and sad and just unacceptable because we know we need to be there for teenagers and for others who are struggling in our community and otherwise. Let's keep that in our prayers, prayers for healing. We have a number of folks who are struggling with health issues, lots of folks who are, as we mentioned, our grief support. Whether And grief may not be just losing someone. It may be grieving some other situation in our life, a, a job or whatever it is that we have. So all of us are going through different things. But, Tony, would you come and give words to our prayers today? Good morning, church. Good morning. You know, sometimes it's hard to think about what we want to say. And so uh, I decided to do something a little different. Uh, uh, and uh, I have a blog, and uh, this spoke to me a while back. And, and so I'd like to share it, and then we can lead into prayer. God, I need you to be God today. But now, O Israel, the Lord who created you says, do not be afraid, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you go through deep waters and great trouble, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior, Isaiah 43, 1 to 3. And then my prayer came, God, I need you to be God today. Mm -hmm. I need you to be the God who spoke to Isaiah. Think about that. I need you to be the God who will be with me on every winding row and detour in my life. Think about the winding row and detour in your own lives. I need you to be God doing our, my most difficult times, during my scary times, and during the times when my faith is weak. Think of the time when things don't seem right for you, your scary times, when your faith is weak. I need you to be God when I want to throw the towel in and call it quits. We have so many people, they give up. They want to call it quit. They want to quit. We can't do that. God, I need you to be God today. I need you to be the God of love, be the God who performs miracles, the God that heals. My prayer, O oh Lord, be the compassionate God that wants, to be, wants the best for me. God, I need you to be God today, the God I want to follow, the God I want to share with others, the one that the world so desperately needs. I need a God that knows my heart, my soul, my every weakness, and despite my fault, will love me anyway. God, we need you to be God today, the one that not only hears our prayers, but will answer our prayers, the one that brings hope to a new generation of believers and continue to comfort his current disciples. That's us, guys. God, we need you to be the God who spoke to Isaiah the one that helps us weather our storm, weather our storm, the God whose footprints are in the sand, the God we can always count on. God, I personally need you today. I need a God who promised to be with me until the end of my time. God, I need you today. Will you be my savior, my Isaiah God today? God, we thank you for this. We pray in Jesus' name, our savior, amen. 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 should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long, and long for heaven, for heaven and home? When Jesus 
Jesus is my portion, my portion, my constant friend is, is he. His eyes are sparrows, and I know. I don't know about you, but I think I've been to church today. Thank you, James. Maybe two or three times. If you think about the songs we've heard already today, I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. I like that song. Because sometimes we need to be reminded that God is God. And thank you, Tony, for that wonderful blog from or reading from your blog and prayer too. That we need sometimes to God just be God today. And the song Sanctuary that Prepare us to be a sanctuary, a safe space for ourselves and for others. And goodness, this eyes on the sparrow. Although sometimes I get a little nervous when I think about God's watching me all the time. You know, and I'm watching you all too, and you're all watching me, and we'll watch it later on, you know, whatever. If you look at it later, any mistake we've made or anything that slipped out of our mouth, if I take my collar off, might be on the recording later. We might have to edit it out. And then that wonderful song, Nobody, what? Nobody knows the what? The troubles I see. Nobody who? Knows but Jesus. No, sing it with me. Nobody knows the money I have. Nobody knows but Jesus. Yeah, I thought you'd like that one. It's offertory time, by the way, if you didn't know that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the gift of life and of love and of laughter and humor. And thank you for your blessings. Thank you for those small things in life that we tend to just walk right over and take for granted. Forgive us for those times. And as we fill ourselves up with gratitude, may we become generous as you become generous, not only in giving of uh, our money, but also ourselves for this journey together that you've called us to. We thank you. We praise you. We are thankful that we've come together in this space and place at this time, at this place and space we know is new life, not only inside of this house, but outside of this house with all those that we know and those we're getting to know and yet to know. We praise you. We thank you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. I invite you to give as God's Spirit leads you to give today. We don't pass the offering plates. You can get up at any time and put something there. You can go online or go on your phone, newlifemcc.net, and give something on our giving page. Drop something in the mail to us. All different kinds of ways for us to continue to support everything that we do here at New Life. But thank you for who you are. Thank you for your generosity. And may God continue to lead us. Try. 
trouble in your life, God will bear your burdens and move all discord and strife. That's why we've come this far by faith. I'm leaning, leaning on the Lord. Please rise and join us in singing the doxology. <clears throat> Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God Gracious God, we do indeed offer our thanks and our gratitude and our love for these blessings today, God. I ask that we are, we are allowed to use these blessings to give you glory in everything that we do. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The choir is seated, and as this goes back on the screen, Megan gets upset in the back if I don't have my stole in the right spot. Am I straight? No. I knew the answer to that one. <laughs> Nobody knows but my husband. Why me, Lord? Why me? How many of us have ever said that? There used to be a song, What have I ever done to deserve even one of God's blessings on me? But honestly, when I was growing up, that song, although it resonated with me on one, one angle of it, but another wanted to say, What have ever I ever done to deserve all I'm going through right now? How many of us have felt that in our lives as well? The passages of Scripture that uh, Jeff read, and even though you don't see Jeff up here, that's Jeff's voice, and uh, thankful for Jeff's voice to be able to share those Scriptures in ways that just are powerful, I think, just listening to that. That Old Testament book of Job is supposedly the oldest book that was passed down, and whatever we can read into that, and I sometimes struggle with that too, because remember, Job was, I won't say a victim, but supposedly there was a conversation between God and Satan, and Satan challenged God and said, yeah, Joe, Joe's all faithful to you because Job has all this sort of stuff. And God says in that book, go, go and do what you want to do with him. Well, and Satan does and takes everything that he has. And so you read that little snippet that's there. You know, I loathe my life, but how many of us in context at some point or another have gotten to the point, and maybe people we know and don't know right around us are feeling that way? And we want to, you know, give ourselves freedom to have that complaint, but it talks about the bitterness of our soul. I don't know if you've ever been to that point. You just felt there was that sour bitterness down deep in your soul that you just didn't feel like you could get rid of. And that's difficult, I think. That passage from Matthew often isn't taken in the context that I'm using it today, but 
where it talks about the children playing and you didn't dance or you didn't mourn with us. And it's like, all right, you didn't do this. I want to take my ball and go home. So we all tend to have a little pity party once in a while. And I wrote a little poem about this. Well, how many of us have ever said, woe is me? Or maybe we heard our parents and grandparents say it, if that's not a, a term that our younger folks are using today, woe. Woe is me. Granny used to say, we po, but we're not that po. So my poem goes like this. Woe, woe is me. Po is me, although we ain't that po. Oh, ho is you. Oh, no, I meant ho is me. When you ain't got no more dough. How did we sink this low? So let's all go, not down to the river, but where the pity party does flow, pity party Sunday. That's my poem today. Would you like to do the benediction now? Sit down. <laughs> so the question is, is having a pity party a good thing or a healthy thing for us? And there are different perspectives on this. And I, one of my pet peeves are clergy folks and preachers and all kinds of ministers who assume and take the role of trying to be God's gift to the psychological world when we're not. I'm certifiable, but not certified. And you can take all kinds of meaning from that. So I'm very clear about that. But what you're going to hear today is going to sound like part psychology, part sociology, part theology. And you know, that's part of life, isn't it? It really is. Think about this when we hear thinking about whether a pity party is a good thing or a challenging thing. How many times have we either said or had said to us, Get a hold of yourself. Put your big person panties on. My granny would always say, cry me a little handful. Oh, it used to drive me nuts when she'd say that. And I love her to death. And she also said, feel again, you'll feel better. I'm telling you, when we said that song, I got a feeling. I was afraid to ask what kind of feelings this crowd had. How about this one? Suck it up. Big boys don't cry. Cry, baby. Stop whining, or another word if you want to use it. Grow up. Call me when you're done with your pity party. So the second perspective is have yourself a merry little pity party. <laughs> Sam loves it when I sing. One Huff Huffington Post contributor put it this way. The purpose of a pity party is to deal with your crap and get on with it. Now, the challenge, though, is that when we have a pity party, we sometimes get stuck there. And, oh, my goodness, we don't know. And I've often said, you know, Jesus knew when to engage with folks. He knew when to withdraw. The difference between us and Jesus is that we engage, and then we withdraw, and then we don't know when to re-engage with folks. So let's learn from Jesus. We'll come back to that passage again. But let's talk about this. Now, interesting, having about a pity party, this same uh, person said this, the purpose of a pity party is to deal with your crap and get on with it. Hence, a party, instead of, going on a, instead of an ongoing state of mind, here's how to ensure that self-pity doesn't become a permanent part of you. And this is the rules for throwing your pity party. So those of you who are event planners, Jeannie, I know you're going to want to take notes on this one. Party rules is set a time limit that you're going to allow yourself to be in that space for a certain period of time. Now you can go look at this uh, article later. It's Suzanne Pascal who wrote this. Uh, rule number two was pick a theme. If you're going to have a party, don't just throw a party. Go, go all the way. Have a theme for your party. So that, call out what it is. The third rule is re resist the urge to invite guests. Now, that's a hard one because when we're going through it, we want everybody else to go through it too, don't we? Misery loves what? Company. Company. Amen to that. Oh, my goodness. Number four, some of us might have a hard time with this. No abuse of mind-altering substances. What? 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 No drinking. No drinking. No drinking or smoking. When I was at the first church that I was working at up in West Jefferson, North Carolina, Beaver Creek High School had a sign in the gym that said, no dipping, chewing, spitting, or smoking. They just wiped it all out in one whole thing. So that was way back when. Crying is not only allowed, it's mandatory. Sometimes we just need a good cry, don't we? And sometimes we've been cultured, nurtured to think that we can't cry. Somebody forgot to tell me about that. 
we think about going back to this theme about party themes, I know that's where Jeannie's going. She's thinking, what's going to be the theme? Rodney, too. Some of us could think about themes for this. But there's a song that came out probably before I was born in 1963. <laughs> Do you know what song I'm talking about? We're talking about parties and pity parties. What is it? You're right. It, want to. It, it, it's my party cry if I want to. Boy, they, they're older than I am. They remember this. <laughs> Leslie Gore. Leslie Gore. Do you remember Leslie Gore? Some of you have said, I didn't know who wrote the song, but now there's an interesting backstory to this. The song wasn't written by Leslie, but Leslie became, made it famous. And Quincy Jones, uh, Leslie was one of Quincy Jones' first you know, clients and, and putting her out there, and it really made Quincy Jones famous. But it turns out that Leslie, she was 16 when she recorded that song. But and it was about, the person who wrote it said it was about a 16-year-old who was upset because they were told their grandparents had to be invited to the party. So imagine that, you know, the, 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 the talk about cramping your style. But the backstory with Leslie Gore, though, is that Leslie is or was family. Did you know that? She lived with her partner, Lois Sasson, for 33 years. She also hosted the PBS special In the Life back in the 90s and the early 2000s. So I thought that was pretty cool that, you know, that song, we talk about pity parties, that there's that connection to our community. Somebody else by the name of Melanie Martinez, I don't know if she's gay or straight or how she self-identifies, uh, has a song, a, a playlist of 14 different pity party songs. So go look that up if you need to have a pity party sometime. All right, so let's get back to the question of whether this is a good thing or a healthy thing. But before we do, one other little rabbit, I want to, maybe a couple rabbits I want to chase here because, you know, rabbits multiply pretty fast. We need to understand, I think, the difference between pity, empathy, and compassion. What's the difference, if you think about it in your mind, if you had to answer that, what's the difference between pity empathy and compassion. And Dr. Jacqueline Rinaldi has written an article, and you can go look this one up too. And she, she says, empathy is feeling with someone. It's seeing another person's pain and feeling from inside what the pain might be like. Compassion is empathy in action. She feels empathy for another soul and then takes action to alleviate part of that. She goes on and gives a lot of differences between empathy and pity and compassion. And she also says that it seems both empathy and compassion are given a bad rap sometimes because sometimes we feel like we have to overgive. And sometimes that can be a coping mechanism that maybe it's the opposite of self-pity is that we feel like that we're, we're strong, we can do this. And so they sometimes work in polar opposites to each other. But go look at that article that Dr. Jacqueline Rinaldi wrote if you want to understand better the difference between pity, empathy, and compassion you tie this back to Scripture because we're told that to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, mind, and soul, and to love our neighbor as ourself. And then to begin to think about what's the difference between loving ourselves, taking care of ourselves, self-pity, and self-compassion. And can we be honest? I, I joke a lot about looking in the mirror and seeing how I look. And sometimes I see my mom, sometimes I see my dad, Sometimes I keep the lights off because I don't want to see what I'm seeing in there. But that's also true emotionally and spiritually for me as well, is that sometimes I think it's hard for us to hold the mirror up and see, you know, are we stuck in that self-pity? Are we doing something that's proactive, that's self-compassion and gets us in a better place so we can truly share that compassion with someone else? Does that make sense? Now, sometimes, though, let's get back to this. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? We all like to know that we're listened to. We all like to know, and it's good to, we want to know we're accepted, we want to know we're listened to, that we're heard, that we're included, not just tolerated, but included. But let's be honest. Sometimes don't we enjoy that little pity party? Come on, be honest. When was the last time you had one? There's a term now that I'd never heard of before. You've heard of catfishing, especially in this day that lots of you are online and all the other dating apps and all that. I won't mention the ones I've seen y'all on. <laughs> so cat, catfishing is when somebody's using a persona online that's not theirs to try to draw somebody else in. There's a new term now called sad fishing, where you're throwing something out there in social media that just 
you know, you're, you're asking for people to give you empathy or sympathy and all of that. So I guess the question we have to ask ourselves is are we sad fishing in a way? And there's, there's some questions. Are we looking for validation? And validation can be a positive thing, but validation can also be something that's not helpful for us. If we're looking to validate something in our lives that's not healthy, boy, we've seen a lot of that in politics recently, haven't we? But what about in real life, too? We do the same thing. Here's uh, well, this one author said that here's some things you can recognize. Do we frequently start sentences with, I didn't deserve? Do we regularly tell others that life or parts of our life are unfair? Do we repeatedly talk about how someone has harmed you? Do we draw attention to our problems and ask what, why they happened to you? Do we subtly wish for negative outcomes so we can talk about them? Boy, that's a hard one to acknowledge about ourselves. Do we get caught up in our own head and become unaware of other people? And do we look at someone else's misfortune through how it negatively impacts ourselves? Now, all these authors together are saying a couple of things. And again, I'm not the expert here. I'm, not, I'm certifiable but not certified. Things in common about how for us to make sure that we're approaching pity. And pity is a natural thing for us to have for ourselves and others. But it's self-awareness. It is the ability to not be afraid to look in the mirror because we know that God's Spirit is with us and that God's Spirit is going to help us discern that even if we don't like what we're seeing, even if we're bringing a whole lot of baggage to the table, or maybe we feel like we've been treated unfairly. Maybe we feel like we have been a victim of something. And it's not bad to have that feeling. Someone described it, you know, I don't talk about the sin we have because that's, that's the Holy Spirit's responsibility to convict you of your sins, not mine. If you feel like I'm convicting your sins, we got to listen to the other spirit, not mine. But someone described that self-pity in a negative way is the most seductive sin because we want to, to see it, but to receive the validation. And sometimes we get validation and we're listening to people. There are a lot of different voices out there. And just because I give you or somebody else gives you advice doesn't mean that's the best advice for you. Sometimes we listen and people want to give us advice that's not the best for us. And so it takes discernment, and I think that's where God's Spirit comes in to help us understand what is best for us. Because it's not just a compartmentalized life that we lead, that we live this here and this here and this here. That sounds like being in the closet again, doesn't it? But it's a life that's whole. Whether it's physical, emotional, spiritual, intellectual, the wholeness of all of this. I told you it's going to sound like psychology, sociology, and theology today, and that'll only take about four hours to get through this this afternoon. <laughs> In addition to self-awareness, though, there are things that, and I really like every single author that I read said, practicing gratitude will help you break that pattern. And somebody else said, it's not bad to have self-pity, but be careful that it doesn't become sort of, remember the old myth that if you cross your eyes, what was going to happen? They get stuck that way. There were some other myths, too. I won't go there with some of those. But if you cross your eye, this is the bad side. They got that one over there. If you cross your eye, well, you know what? There is truth that if we have a self-pity party too often, we may make that part of our nor what we think is normal, and that's not very good for us, is it? Every single one said self-awareness. They said gratitude. They also said recognizing in that self-awareness that we can receive and, and seek validation in different ways. But the other thing that they all agreed on was staying connected. It's so easy for us, especially if we're already feeling like that our pity is because nobody wants to talk to me. Nobody wants to, to, to be around me. I don't get picked when I get to do this. Nobody invites me to this party or that. Then we further self-isolate. And staying connected with each other, especially in positive ways, is what helps us bring us back up. If we, Jesus said, if I'm lifted up, I will draw people to me. And it's not, and that's the wonderful thing, about, I think, about how we come to communion in our church. And we do communion. Wow, Ken's even, even got the verification of uh, porn in Virginia, too. So... <laughs> Usually I make people, ant was that ringing or did you just play something? Uh, yeah, you just, something you just touched something wrong. I'm, yeah, we're not going there either. Wow. 
I already forgot where I was in this sermon, Ken. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of y'all know that. Staying connected, though, I think is important. Uh, and in, in, to hold each other accountable. And, you know, a true friend will come and, you know, I think about Eeyore from, from Winnie the Pooh. Eeyore said, I wish I wasn't so gloomy all the time. And it was his friends, though, it was Winnie the Pooh and it was Piglet and Tigger and all of them that stuck with him, but not in a way that enabled and empowered Eeyore. Sometimes they would challenge Eeyore. And I think that's the positive challenge that we want to do, not to come down harder to crucify someone, but to help us, you know, realize, hey, you know, we can get through this. Enjoy your moment. Feel what you feel. And sometimes we... We, we feel like we can't feel what we're feeling. Does that make sense? And while we're told, you know, you're not allowed to feel this. Yes, you can feel what you need to feel. And God's spirit isn't just spiritual. It's about the whole part of our body. So I think God truly, truly does understand that. Now, the perspective that we have in all that, sometimes we can't see beyond the trees when we get into that pity party. Sometimes it's right there. And sometimes we have to step back and you know, I'm not a very good golfer, but I have golfed some in my life. And, you know, one Sunday I remember over at Norview, I, I brought a golf club in and even chipped some soft golf balls back at people. Is that when you, when you go off, and, and if I'm going down the fairway, you know, drive to the hole, for those of you who don't know anything about golf. So you go to, the go, go to the hole, but sometimes you can't see the hole, right? And, and so you, you drive, I ain't going over on this side. <laughs> I knew he'd have a comment on that. So you drive down the fairway. you got a choice of which way my ball is going to go. It ain't going to go straight, all puns intended. It's going to go left or right. And if there's water on the, on the course, it's going in the water. But sometimes you get into the rough. Sometimes you get into the trees, and you can't see where you need to go. And so we think we want to just plow right on through. They tell me in golf that the best thing to do is to go back out to the fairway. That's the shortest way to the hole. Sometimes we forget that the best way to get through our challenges is to reconnect with Jesus, right. is to reconnect with the Spirit of God that connects us to love and to each other. And we're trying to plow through best we can, and we just can't see where, how it's ever going to end when we just need to take a step back and breathe. Take a step back. And as we look at the scriptures that Joey's going to put on the screen in just a moment, we go back to that passage from Matthew the ending passage that says, Come all to me, come to me when you're burdened, when you're weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke. And remember, yoke was what the oxen wore to pull the load. And learn from me, for I am gentle and humble at heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, we love that passage of Scripture in churches. How many times have we heard it preached on? But we skip over that part, learn from me. Because I think that we don't realize that Jesus is trying to tell us in sometimes subtle, sometimes direct ways that you're okay. I'm with you. Even to the end of the age, I'm with you. I've given you. Sometimes we pray for more faith or we want to be blessed. We want more faith. Bless me, Lord. I sure would like to have a Lexus or a, a Jaguar or a BMW again. Bless me, Lord. Well, that's not what's happening, is it? But God's maybe saying to us like God said to Moses when the people complained about the water and the water was bitter. And I think that's a danger too that we have when we stay stuck in that pity party so long that not only the water gets bitter, but we get bitter. And then we start to resent. And then we get angry. And then we get hateful. And hate acts come out of that. But God said to Moses, pick up that stick that's right there beside of you and throw it in the water. Now, was the miracle that that water got changed in something God did, or was it truly in the stick? I like to think that God was saying to Moses and to me and you, I've already given you faith. Reconnect. Take a step back. Breathe. It may be not as bad as what you think it is, because I am truly with you to the end of the age. And we, we get stuck, though, of being a victim. We get stuck in despair, and then we lose sight of hope. We lose sight of of hope and also the big picture of things. I said one time that I was going to preach a sermon, and I don't think I've ever preached this together, but I have to preach it at the same time. I used to say it was about jaded, cynical gay men 
and angry, mad at the world, chip on my shoulder lesbians. And I knew that I had to preach those together or I'd get crucified. In today's context, let's take gender out of it. Let's just make this non-binary. When we get to that point, have, can you identify with any part of that? Being jaded, being cynical, being angry, resentful, bitter, mad at the world, chip on my shoulder. Again, it don't matter how you self-identify. We've all been there sometimes. It's my party. I cry if I want to. Well, go ahead and cry a little bit. His granny used to say, cry me a little handful, and then let's go on with this in a way that is healthy in a way that doesn't leave us stuck or not. And somebody said also, and Dr. Brene Brown said, how do you tell sometimes? You can't tell if someone's being sincere or if they're, being, if they're faking it. And she tells the story about when she was swimming with her husband and she was trying to be a little romantic with her husband and he just wasn't having anything to do with it. And she said, and this is what she suggests doing, is saying to the person, this is the story I'm telling myself about what's going on. Either you don't find me attractive anymore or I don't look good in my swimming suit or whatever it is. Turns out none of that was true. He was having a panic attack in the water and was worried about getting back to that. So if we say to the person and just be in direct dealing with the person, this is what I'm telling myself out of what I'm hearing, sometimes you reconnect and find out the truth. And sometimes we don't do that, do we? We want to make assumptions that something, and then that assumption, you know, if Dr. Brown had, had left with that assumption, boy, can you imagine how long it would have taken her husband to really, you know, smooth that over? If she thought it was because he didn't want to, you know, have anything to do with her intimately, romantically, because he didn't find her attractive anymore, or didn't like the bathing suit that she wore, and didn't look at it like she did 25 years ago, or whatever like that, like my wetsuit. <laughs> oh, my. Job had every reason, every reason to be stuck in his pity party. And yet, even with the advice that his friends gave him, curse God and die, Job didn't. It takes strength to do that. It takes discernment. It takes God's Spirit to do that. Let's see the Scripture, Joey, if you can put it on the screen from Deuteronomy. I don't know if you're seeing it both places. You can look in the back. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. The Lord will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. And then there's a passage from Paul's letter to the church at Ephesians. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. Sometimes I think in the middle of our pity partiness that we forget that we can still be a reflector of God's love. No matter how we feel like we look in the mirror, that God's love is still in you and you and you and in me. And our choices are about everyday life. Our choices in the perspective that we have the choices in our own self-awareness, the choices of how we seek to be validated or not and how we listen to the advice that's being given and the choices of how we stay connected to each other. You've heard this story, I'm sure, many times, but it seemed appropriate for today, and I had forgotten that the word self-pity is even in this story. It's a Cherokee Indian story, and sometimes I've heard it told from other Native American traditions. It's the wolf you feed. Do you remember that one? One evening, an old Cherokee told his grandson about a battle that goes on inside of people. He said, my son, the battle is between two wolves inside of us all. One is evil. It is anger, envy, jealousy, sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, self-pity, guilt, resentment, inferiority, lies, false pride, superiority, and ego. The other is good. It is joy, peace, love, hope, serenity, Humility, kindness, benevolence, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion, and faith. The grandson thought about it for a minute and asked his grandfather, which wolf wins? The grandfather said, the one you feed. The one you feed. As we come to this table of grace, let us taste 
and receive and feed the love that is inside of us because God loved us. The Lord is with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks and praise. It is right indeed, O Lord, to give you thanks and praise. And so we lift our voices with all the saints and angels and proclaim your glory in unending praise as we praise together, saying... Most gracious and merciful God, creator of us all, savior of us all, a Holy Spirit that sustains us and finds us even in those moments when we have self-doubt, self-pity, and surrounds us with your love and energy and mercy and peace and compassion. As your spirit is pouring out upon the gifts on this table, the gifts that we hold in our hand and gifts that folks will hold wherever they are today or later in the week, we place our faith and our trust in you that it is your spirit of love and grace and mercy that finds each of us and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Jesus gathered His closest disciples around Him and He celebrated the Passover. Our Jewish brothers and sisters still celebrate the Passover today because they believe that God was and is in the business of delivering us from oppression. We believe that same thing, don't we? That God is in the business of helping us not only be delivered ourselves out of oppression, but also to speak up for those who can't speak for themselves. And my goodness, in this time that we live, we certainly need to be able to do that. He took the bread from perhaps what was left, the bread and the cup from the table, and blessed it and broke it. And I like the translation that said, this is my body, not just broken, but open to you. No matter who you are, how you self-identify, or whatever has happened in your life right now, realizing that God's love... I don't know about you, but that's humbling for me. It's humbling and at the same time it's empowering because how could somebody love us so much, not only to create us, but to give us love, to love us, and to make and give us the ability to do the same thing, to share that love. He took the cup and blessed the cup and said, this is the new covenant. It's something new. You've heard this, but I'm giving this to you now. It's about grace and mercy and forgiveness and love and acceptance and inclusion and your place is at the table. You not only have a place at the table but a voice at the table because I created you and you are a child of God. Say it with me, I am a child of God. I am a child of God. And ain't nobody, nobody going to take that from me. No matter who you are, how you self-identify, and this is not about being part of this church or of any other. It's about celebrating God's love for you right where you are in this moment. So know you're welcome to celebrate from this table today. Today we think about it, and sometimes it takes a while for it to sink in. And you know I like to ask you to do it two or three times. Say it softly to yourself. It is for me. It is for me. Now just like you woke up on Christmas morning and you're so excited about the gifts under the tree when we realize that we really did get what we want or maybe what we didn't ask for we got and wow, are we more excited about it than what we had asked for. I think that's how it is for God's love. We may not realize what it is, but it's more than what we ask for. Say it now with me. It's for me. It's for me. All right. Now look to two or three people, two or three people, and say it is for you too. And the reason I asked you to go two or three people first, because when we do it all a blanket thing, we tend to lose sight of the individual relationships that we have. Now go all out, mom and them and all y'all and Ewan's and all that. I am looking forward to the day, and I don't want to judge, and I know it's easy with certain people who have passed away who have been so condemning of our community that I live not too far from and down in Virginia Beach, and you know who I'm talking about. And some people want to say, oh, he's not, not in heaven and all that. Somebody said that he's celebrating the best pride celebration that he could have ever celebrate. And I think to be together and have that realization for people who hate us that God's love, and lots of times we'll say, I can't wait till I get to heaven because I can't wait to ask God, or I'm going to talk to Paul about this. Why didn't he say this? I think we're going to be so blown away with what God's love does for us in the perspective. You know, Jesus said, I came that you might have life and life more abundantly. And as we 
live into that, step into that, transition into that, whatever terms we want to use, that takes me from humility to excitement. Yeah, a little bit of unknown there, but that's okay. Today we proclaim the great miracle and mystery of our faith. you didn't get one of our individual communion packets, if you'll raise your hand, Jennifer will make sure you bring you one. Again, it's not about being a member of this church or of any other. If this is your first time today, you're as welcome to receive as anybody else. If you're at home today, go get a cookie or a cracker or a cup of juice, cup of wine, doesn't matter what, or if it's later in the week, because God's Spirit is connecting us all in this moment. The choir is going to come and sing, and then we'll share together the communion, the body of Christ. Even when we aren't sing sure about singing it or all not together on it, God will take care of us. <laughs> the body of Christ, may we share it together. Cup of grace and mercy and salvation, may we share it together. I invite you as you're comfortable to rise as you're able as we sing the prayer that our Lord taught us to pray. Forgive 
our closing song today. I've got that joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in Go now in the grace and mercy and peace of Almighty God. Let no one cause you to doubt or second guess yourself that you are a beloved child of God created for this moment and all that we share together. God bless you, my friends, and thank you for being here. We are often tossed and driven on the restless sea of time. On the skies and piling tempests, off the sea of bright sunshine. In that land of perfect day, when the mist has rolled away, we will understand it better by and by. Oh, my God.